Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Welcome to Unscripted Slide Back. My name is Josh, joined as ever by my colleagues, Ray and Mike. This is not the name of the podcast. This is mutiny. I did not condone this. We did not vote for this. This is unscripted gaming. Josh is a liar. Most of the time I make names that aren't voted for, but they somehow stick. So he's a... Let's just go with it. Let's, you know... See, uh, unscripted gaming plays X. Unscripted X. gaming plays X. X. <sighs> it's a great <laughs> video X, series. X. <sighs> Gentlemen, <laughs> what's up? We're still quarantined. <laughs> sure For the better, I think, I, I think I was born in quarantine, and I will die in quarantine, and that's okay. But also, I hate it. Uh, but also, we're doing I think our part. This is the that... first week I was like, okay, I'm going kind of nuts now. That's fair. Because I also realized, you know, you know, rampaging pandemic aside, that is all very bad and not good. And we mm-hmm. need to do everything we can to minimize the harm because that's what we should do as a society. Yeah. But god damn, I miss basketball so badly. <laughs> this would be the playoffs right now, which is when basketball is at its absolute best. And brother, I just miss it so badly. God. Ah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in in the the soccer world, um, the Premier League was having a big meeting this week about like how they might return and all that jazz. And the the Bundesliga in Germany is actually scheduled to be playing some games this weekend. Um, but still, you know, you're, you're talking a lot of like behind closed doors stuff. Um, you know, the, the things coming out of the premier league were if they were to have to come back, they're going to do some like friendlies and some, um, changes to the substitute rules. And also like if one player tests positive, like the entire team is supposed to quarantine for yeah, exactly like... two weeks. And it's like, you know at least in Europe and with soccer, like not only is there like titles to play for in your in your country, but also like some international competitions throughout Europe that may or may not happen that come with more money and all like there's a lot like And I guess like with soccer, like I mean I, I don't know a ton about like how the Premier League and all that stuff works, but like it seems like they I feel like that would be more feasible than than like the NBA right now because NBA like I feel like soccer you have a little bit more schedule flexibility like if we're we're in the playoffs right now we should be in the playoffs so like what if game 1 of like Raptors v the Celtics or something like I don't know um someone on the Raptors Kyle Lowry like test positive what do you do yeah like um, you, you know the, the it doesn't this... make any sense like you cancel the game yeah, you... basically but then you cancel the series. But do you also then does you that, know, do the do the do the Celtics also get eliminated because they came in yeah, contact or does with somebody this, who or just just Toronto not from not being able to like field a team just like DNP the whole series like because you can't we like, need to go ahead and cancel whatever, sports like, until we figure this whole thing out. It, it it would just be like such a far and even if they like do get something like somehow put it like a playoffs playoff tournament together it would be such a farce it would be like nobody would take this championship seriously it would just be like a huge asterisk it would just suck so they should just not do it yeah that sucks for the wisest option it's 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 definitely like this this is making a lot of people confront a lot of unique challenges and problems but you know especially some of the smaller clubs and and smaller sports you're talking about you know their lifeblood is the little bit of revenue they get from tv deals and and broadcast rights but the bulk of it is from tickets and concessions and day of stuff so Mm -hmm. you know they're they're talking about even some major teams in european soccer who just aren't as big as some of the richest clubs talking about potentially going bankrupt and shuttering because they just don't have 
the money like you know you, you think about sports franchises as these you know massive massive organizations and they are but like if you look at their financials they're really more like medium-sized businesses in yeah. terms of like cash flow and what they need to stay afloat because yes they bring in lots of revenues but especially the big clubs and the big teams in america like they're also paying a lot of money for stadium upkeep for salaries and wages and all that it's yeah. just you know well you know like a, a potential like six month stop of all income would be disruptive to just about any business as we've seen yeah yep folks i know while we're still on topic of this i want to shift from uh sports a little bit to did you guys read that article where like probably by september we might have an airline or two that says yeah we don't exist anymore uh speculation is like frontier airlines might not be a thing but I mean, they're literally selling twenty-five buy them dollar tickets. Out. Buy them out. <laughs> it's yeah, my next movie no pass life. venture. Ray now owns an airline, <laughs> a defunct airline. <laughs> Wait, airline, movie theater. Okay, all right. Build a movie now, theater. I, Fly this is bitch. in the airplane. This is really off topic, but we talked about this like two weeks ago in our uh, chat that Josh has now called the suck down, which I hate you for. Um, if the if if tomorrow all movie theaters except Alamo Draft House, but everyone else said like we're done, we this is not a viable business model anymore. From now on, when you get movies, you just pay eighteen bucks to have them stream to your home. No, that dream sucks. come true. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the that's the. No, that's I hell. already uh-uh. I already don't watch a lot of movies eh. as it is. My movie consumption would go to basically whatever my daughter watches like, on Disney. I'm, like, so, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not paying eighteen bucks to stream Black Widow on my okay TV at home. I'm just I, not doing it. I would. Sorry, Disney. I, I would gladly. I would it, pay eighteen dollars to watch Uncut Gems on my very okay TV at home. Oh, uh, you don't even have to it's do that, sir. Time. It's six bucks you on YouTube right that. now. Yeah, yeah there, that, there's, there, we're all wrong about some things, Ray. This is yours. You're, you're wrong here, buddy. Yeah, no, so hear me out. You're, no, I've no, always no, been on the movie have to. theater experience. All in favor of moving on to the video games part of the podcast. Let's talk about video games because Fine. Ray is wrong. <laughs> Motion passed. Ray, shut up. No, this is the future. Deal with it, y'all. <laughs> This I is a good takes only podcast. <laughs> They're hot takes, yes, but they have to be good. They have to be good. Speaking no of takes. good takes, let's talk about the uh, Xbox Series X gameplay event. The gameplay event that had no game. I thought we said we were talking about. I thought we were talking about good takes here. Oof. That was. I mean, it was. It was a take. It. W- mm. It wasn't bad. Yeah. But I don't know that I'd call it good. Mm. Uh. The vibe, did you guys actually I watch, watch it? it. I, sh- I did not watch it. The vibe I kind of got I did from not watch everybody it. talking about it was like, oh, yeah, it's an Xbox. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. I, saw, I saw somebody oh. said they were they were very whelmed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. They were That's very whelmed. I, I cannot remember who. I saw it on Twitter or something. I, I can't remember who to give credit to them. But, yeah, they said, I'm, I wasn't overwhelmed. I wasn't underwhelmed. I was just whelmed. <laughs> Uh, their president of marketing responded to someone on Twitter saying, "Yeah, we um, we didn't do that one very well. Next time we promise a gameplay session, we'll we'll try to show gameplay. Have, have gameplay. Yeah. Was As there a, any like in-game engine stuff? You could say that a lot, and there was a lot of that. There was a lot of this is shot in engine, and okay, because like I think that is still." helpful to an extent like unreal today was posted something that was not true gameplay but like was in engine well i mean the thing they were showing off was an engine so if they're gonna just they're the only ones that get away with like all we're showing you is graphics and what's capable whereas like a developer studio should probably just say hey what's the mechanics of your game gonna be like because i'm Parsh passively interested in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have no idea how that game's gonna play, at still right now, <laughs> even after seeing their uh, gameplay reveal trailer. I mean, if it plays anything like Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey, it's gonna play great. Yeah. I love it. 
I haven't played um, any of those new ones, but now I've heard that they're very long, so I kind of think I might just jump on in with Valhalla. And yeah, not... I so I am playing not to jump ahead, but I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey again. I've been I've been hopping back into that while my my wife plays um, Animal Crossing on the Switch, and yes, that is a very very long game. I'm in like hour forty right now, and I'm I'm not really sure that I'm close to the end good lord <laughs> that's way too long <laughs> i'm the, the problem like i'm enjoying the main story beats mm-hmm. i really am like that's part of the reason why i've put i think i've sunk more hours into this game than i've had in any game in a long time maybe outer worlds but like the problem is it's just it's there's so much extra stuff and bloat on the side now i did see a report that they were cutting out some of the bloat in Valhalla to kind of cut it down, which I would say, yes, please, please, please do so. Yeah, I saw that as well. They, uh, they're they admitting that Odyssey probably a little long in the tooth. Probably way too many side things you have to do to move on the main plot. Yeah, very good, very long. But yeah, the, the Xbox S- Series X. I mean, they, did, did, did any of you guys see a price or anything? I don't know if I learned anything from this event. Yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of, like, want to give people a little bit of credit because, you know, a little bit of rope on some of this stuff just because they had to, like, throw the thing together very quickly because of unprecedented global pandemic. <laughs> um, which, like you know, is something I'm going to say for everything, basically, because that's what I do. Um, so I kind of give them a little credit on, like, kind of scrambling with some of these reveals and stuff. And I mean, I'm sure like, you know, around E3 time and, um, so basically next month, I mean, I, I, you know, just give it a little bit more time. We'll see that's, we'll see that stuff in plenty of time before, you know, you have to buy it. Like, you know what I mean? I I get, I get like, you know, watching a gameplay thing and being sad that something announced as a gameplay thing and not actually getting a lot of true gameplay is a bummer that doesn't make a lot of sense from Microsoft saying that. Mm-hmm. But calm down. Like, we're going to get it. So just be patient. It'll be there. Don't worry. No, you're you're absolutely right. Eventually we will see what gameplay does look like. But, uh, yeah, in the future they could they could do with a lot less misleading words. That's yeah, exactly. it. Just... So uh, I want to talk with you, Mike and Josh, about this new game I just played and I finally completed. It was the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, Lay it on us. What you got? For one, I think I said this earlier, this is the most beautiful-looking console game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Running on a... From what I could tell, it was 60 frames per second. Someone correct me on that, but it looked like it. Or it's just It looks really, really good from what I've seen. Just from what little oh, I've seen. It's so good. It does some interesting things with the stories. The combat is like a wonderful blend of Final mm-hmm. Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts. This game is getting a lot of flack, though. It's getting a lot of flack because of the ending. And it ends in a very controversial way, is the best mm-hmm. way I could put it without getting into spoilers. I would still recommend everybody that loves the game series of Final Fantasy to go try it. Um, if you got sixty bucks and you got like forty hours laying around during this these unprecedented times, by all means, you will not be disappointed. Everyone that loves JRPGs or action mm-hmm. games can enjoy it. But uh, so I want to so to ask you a question because I know you were you and Josh particularly were pretty concerned about like the price being kind of crazy do you now that you've played through it do you feel like that was pretty fair considering the whole package so my biggest concern of it costing 60 bucks is the section of the game that they're going through for people listening it's just the midgar section and to be fair to square enix um they say on the back of the box this is just the midgar section of the original Final Fantasy story, and it stops there. I I could get the exact wording, but it pretty much says that on the back of the box. So they're okay. they're not fooling you in any way. 
That section in the original game, that takes five hours. Maybe six, if you're taking your time. And you're like, are you really about to charge me 60 bucks yeah. for whatever this section is? No, it took me uh, 60 hours to beat the game. And that was me taking my time and doing almost every side quest because I was loving it. If you're trying mm -hmm. to rush through it, it's going to take you about 40... 40 to 35 hours, I'm so going to go it and say. I guess, so it seems like it's like fleshed out, but not just like padded out, right? <laughs> there's a lot of fleshing uh, out. There's a lot, also a lot of stuff where I'm like, this is padding. This, this didn't need to be here. There are like mm -hmm. characters that pop up for just no reason. You see them once and they go away. There are some characters that you swear died in the original game that they're just like, what if we told you more of their story and how they didn't pass away at this sequence? And you're you're just watching this like, I guess you could do it. Uh, okay. okay. It's like taking a famous a character famous for dying in uh, the uh, an original movie and you see a re-release of the movie, and they're like, what if that character didn't die, and you just learned more about them? And you're like, sure, okay, you're taking me for a loop. This isn't the direction I thought you'd be going. And there are, uh, there are new enemies that come out of nowhere, and there are new... The game is called Final Fantasy Remake. And uh -huh. Josh isn't here, and this, this is kind of the most minor, but also the most major of spoilers... It has that title for a reason. And I would leave it at that. <laughs> Wait. So it's called Final Fantasy Remake, not Final Fantasy It's called Fantasy Final Fantasy VII Remake. VII Remake. Uh, that title ends up meaning something. <laughs> what? What the fu oh, ooh. Ooh. You would have to play it. You, you would have to play it. I will, I will say cre credit to the marketing team. Um, that get, that released a demo. They did something shifty with that demo. That after you beat the game, you shake your head and you say like, "I see what you did now. You guys are actually like hidden genius." <laughs> like some near automata level shenanigans. It is. is yes, that that is the perfect description. That is the perfect really? way to describe that. that. That is intriguing. Thank you. I was looking for the best analogy, but yeah, that that is the perfect way to describe that. Yes. Ooh, that's. I like a lot of the weird shit that game did. So. And uh, a lot of people are pissed. There's a lot of fans across the Final Fantasy community that are like, this isn't what I wanted. You had one job, and <laughs> it was to give me what I asked for. And the creators decided, uh, what if we did something different? And See, this, see it's funny, because like, this sells me on it way more than just, oh yeah, it's a, just a, a fancy, like, HD remaster. This sounds it's, way more interesting that they like. This is. Did, they I hope this that is not as a an opportunity not just to retell the same story. I hope this is not too much of a spoiler, but you are getting so much more than that. They really did find a way to cohesively stretch out what was six hours of game into 30 to 40 hours. For me, 60 hours, because I took forever. Um, it does have its annoyances. Uh, I hated the dialogue for Barrett at first, but then it grew on me, and he grows as a character the more you play the game, and you start understanding and appreciating why he's so boisterous, and by the end of the game, I'm like, nah, he's still one of my favorite characters ever, like, in video gaming, period. Um, there's a surprise character that's not shown in the original marketing, uh... I think I mentioned this in the last podcast, and it's been out on the internet for a while. That character is there. I won't say who, just in case anyone's trying to avoid it, like I was. But that character is 100% there. Uh, some of the more famous fights that you do in the game... Tough as nails now! They're super fucking hard! <laughs> uh, because it's not just a very turn-based JRPG system. You're actually having to move around and account for spaces and spacing and timing of your attacks and mm. I loved it I loved it so much it's it. if I was to give a game of the year this is my game of the year wow no, no other game re being released this year has done the things that it's going to do looks as good as it's going to do and again the soundtrack is so on point <laughs> oh my gosh 
There's like 30, I'm not even joking, it's probably more like 20, 20 different iterations of the battle song when you start a fight, Let the Battle Begins, and they're all kicking it! Every single one of them is dropping it! <laughs> <laughs> Every single one. There's even some surprise tracks, some original ones coming out. And you're like, all right, what you about to do with this? Oh, 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 oh shit. Uh, I, I shared with you guys that one when I said, guys, listen to this track. Uh, I think Mike, Mike said it was a bop. That track comes out of nowhere, and you're like, you can't be just dropping this on me. Like this. Now, whoa, we got to warm up here. You can't just do that. I loved it. I I cannot wait though in like 10 15 years to ask you if the 10 15 years wait to get all three part three to four parts in the $250 investment in the 120 hours was all worth it. I cannot wait for that conversation. So, here's the thing about how many discs it's going to be or how many things it's going to be. There is n the way the game ends and this is partially a spoiler. The way the game ends, there's nothing saying it's going to be three games long. It could be one more. It ends in a certain way where you're like, this could be five. I thought they said that it would be three, maybe more. There, there's so many maybes. Remember, this game was supposed to come out, what, in 2017, 2016, whatever the heck? 2012. So who knows how much... <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> No, but but seriously, there, there's nothing saying that this game is going to take for one forever to make because all they have all the assets for it. I can't imagine they're going to like make a ton of uh, new like character models. They are or like voice completely actors remake the combat, I guess. Too. You're absolutely right. Um, I was gonna save this for our Unreal Five discussion, but I wanted to get this out here on the podcast. This game is huge, data-wise. This game is 95 gigs. It is so damn big that before you could play it, you have to put in a data disk into your PS4, take 45 minutes to download all of the assets for the damn Hell game, yeah. and That's then cool. it says that you can play the game. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I can't wait until we just, like, the PS... The PS6 is just gonna... I don't know. Well, okay, the PS5 will be, like, you know, something lame and whatever. <laughs> PS6, you're gonna like a single game is just gonna be like twice the size of like the cards that you put into like an arcade cabinet. Like, <laughs> you have to like open up like. <laughs> no, Mike, they're just gonna bring back laser disc. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like you're loading a missile into a submarine, and then that starts, and then you have like a 300 terabyte patch on top of that. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, what it's was, gonna be like. And I'm so excited for it. What comes after terabyte? Because I think that's the next. We're we're gonna have to have uh, those level of storage containers for the next game. I think petabyte, but I'm not 100 yeah, sure. Yeah, petabyte, petabyte. We're Eventually, petabyte they're just gonna be like, you need two PS5. PS5s to play this game. And I you actually just have did. to start racking those bad boys. I did not have, have enough like, PS. 10 of them in your closet, like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've gotten to the point where if games are going to be this big, I can only have five games on my PS4, and that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's dumb! I, <laughs> that's yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to make some memory upgrades in my, on my computer here soon. Uh, I'm going to slide another hard drive in. We can do that instead, actually. Um, a hun 100 gigs for Modern Warfare. Anyways, Mike, what games are you playing? Uh, Well, I've been playing a couple of things. Um... One, I went back to... I've been kind of revisiting this little indie game I play off and on uh, for a couple of years called... Uh, um, oh, my God. I forgot the name. Heat Signature. Oh, it's that like, one, yeah. It's basically like sci-fi. Uh, it's like sci-fi, more kind of puzzly. Like It's almost like, like a sci-fi hotline Miami. It, it looks, I mean, it looks kind of like Hotline Miami, but it plays very differently because you're, like, stopping and, and like, kind of... It's almost like a little, like, strategy puzzle game because you have to do, like, a lot of a lot of things have to happen very precisely in order to, like... Because it's like, okay, so this guy has a shield, so I have to break... I have to throw this... Uh, I have to break his shield 
and shoot this guy with the concussion thing because I need to take him back to my ship and to home base, but I need to throw a wrench at the window behind me so the five guys behind me who are rounding the corner don't kill me before. And all these things have to happen within like 0.2 seconds of each other. So you're like, we'll start an action pause and like do something else. And it's just like a really, it's like just a neat little kind of game. It's like really chill. I really like it. That sounds uh, fun. I think it's, it's really, it is really fun once you kind of get into it and kind of learn <laughs> some of like the crazy. Cause sometimes like you'll, it, 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 the one thing the game I think does really well is it, uh, um, I think gives like a little bit of chaos sometimes in really fun ways. So sometimes you'll like be shooting at a guy and you'll accidentally hit like a gas tank and blow up a whole corner of the ship and send everybody flying into space. And then the ship is like being shot at by another ship, but you have to like do redock your ship again and fly th and like uh, run through this like ship that's like being blown up to like rescue this person you were trying to save get back to your pod and get out and without blowing up and it's really it's a really fun little game so i've been playing i have an important bit of that. question for this game yes is it on switch that i don't know it might just let me check that I, I feel think... like i don't know super how well it would super work on the switch is it requiring like too many precise inputs for it to be yeah, on switch yeah i think it might just be we're going to find out but yeah i don't think i don't see it on switch right now and i think it just it would be very difficult with like the precise aiming and stuff you have to do that it wouldn't really i don't it wouldn't really work super well playing with a controller so okay i don't think that would happen um I have also been playing some Deep Rock Galactic. And I heard which of this has game. Been, it's been kind of filling my like my you know Left for Dead co-op shooter niche. Uh, you go on little missions. You complete objectives. Everyone has different roles. Uh, I like the art. It's uh, um, yeah. I haven't played a ton of it, but uh, and I think they actually just. It was an early access, but I think they just hit 1.0 today. I'm looking it up now, and uh, um, wow, it's got a perfect 10 out of 10 on Steam. Yeah, it's people on Steam really like it, and I think it's... I, I've really enjoyed it for what I've played, and it's like a pretty... It, it basically... It it fulfills my fantasy of being... Of that part in Aliens, where all the aliens are crawling on the ceiling, yeah. and then you get to shoot all of them. Because, like, the digger, your digger person is, like, go, was like, uh, like boring through a tunnel to get back to the evac pod. And the other people are, like, running. But you're covering the rear while, like, hundreds of bugs are coming at the tunnel. And you're just, like, <laughs> with your minigun. Which is, is, like, a very specific fantasy of mine that I like to fulfill in video games. And it's very fun. I, I would play on this. I might pick this up, actually. Yeah, it's not. Too, I don't think it's too much either. Um, yeah, it's thirty yeah, bucks it's, right now. Yeah, yeah. It's. I've really enjoyed it so far. But like I said, they. I haven't. I've only played like ten hours or fifteen hours or so. Um, I think that's enough yeah, to gauge 15. an opinion on it. And uh, but yeah, I'm really. I'm enjoying it so far. I wouldn't recommend it playing solo. It's very much like a game you need to like. Co-op for I think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. And it just hit 1.0, so a great reason to maybe take a look at it. Well, thanks. Um, I'm going to add that to my list. I would also... I have also been playing some Destiny still, as I always do. Um, I have a minor grievance I'd like to share. Uh, I'm not alone in this grievance. Uh, our other friend who plays a lot of Destiny would also share this. Um, and I think a lot of the community does it too. And a lot of the things I'm going to say here, Bungie has, re you know, responded to in some of, like, their weekly blog posts being like, okay, we we kind of get we maybe overdid X or Y on this, and we want to refocus on this going in forward in the future, which is good to hear, but I haven't really, I've kind of thought about this, kind of, like, had some of these idea critiques in uh, my head for a while, and just, I think, uh, I think this is kind of, you know, it's kind of a good point, I think, to take... We've kind of done experiments with the whole seasonal mode that they're kind of on for a little bit here, so 
I think we've seen enough of it to give some feedback on it. And Destiny's kind of in a weird spot right now because I'd say with uh, Forsaken, the expansion that came out in 20, 2018. Yeah. Um, That's when I got it. There's a lot of there's a lot of great content. It was a great expansion. And I think the seasonal pass that they did for that uh, added a lot of cool like content. A lot of like came with two new raids in the seasonal pass stuff, both of which are great, which are great raids, I think. Well, one has been it doesn't matter. Um but like added a lot of cool content to the game. But um I feel like, but, and I think added some really good, like, core modes and, like, activities to the game that I think are, are like, really strong foundational parts of the game. Like, uh, they added, like, the forges, which are kind of okay, but, like, add, you know, are just a different kind of core activity. Expanded Gambit stuff. They added the Menagerie, which is, like, a great. Or one of the, I think one of the best things in Destiny 2. Um, and that kind of changed with the 2019 expansion, Shadowkeep. And if you guys, if your eyes start glazing over, I can wrap things up here. So just don't. No, 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 no. I actually want to hear um, like what the grievances are. So it kind of feels like there's two, I think there's two things going on. It kind of felt like in the past seasons in like the Forsaken expansion pass versus the Shadowkeep expansion pass. The Forsaken one felt like they were more okay with you kind of dipping in, checking out all the stuff, then coming back, stepping back and then coming back in when the new season of stuff happened. Yeah. And like the little seasonal, like kind of secret quests that would like kind of bring a lot of attention and bring stuff, people back felt a little bit more organic and with this new seasonal model they have like it's a pretty traditional like you know Fortnite, call of duty looking season pass um like a battle pass or something like that yeah it's a lot more of like a battle pass than like a season pass it's so like the terminology is like kind of, kind of confusing all right um but i think they've kind of got themselves into a little bit of a pickle because um there's two things going on here. So one is that they're taking this game that has a lot of stuff to do, but it kind of, they're kind of, they've built this system that they really want you to make sure you like that. It kind of encourages like more of check-ins and stuff like that in a way that doesn't feel like super fun sometimes. Are they asking for like daily logins or something like that? There's not like a daily login, well, I mean, in in some ways, actually, with this season, yeah, there are some daily daily repeatable things you can do for for guns and stuff. But like, oh, you, there's they've kind. Of, I think the the kind of main problem to have is like the uh, is, this is. I have to explain a lot of different systems for. The, I'm going to try to explain this as, as quickly as I can. So the thing is, like, armor that you get during that current season has mods in it. That, that only that until now like they actually fixed this mid kind of flow because they realized it was not super great but like had mods that would let you do certain builds and so you could do really deep into that they would kind of encourage you to, to like go deep into that build to get the most out of it and spend a lot of resources on your armor to do so but then when the new like then a month later that stuff is kind of irrelevant mm-hmm and so that it just doesn't sometimes it just doesn't feel like super worth it to invest super hard into that stuff because you don't like eventually you're just going to get it's some of that stuff is going to get sunsetted kind of softly yeah just because you won't get, like high level armor for certain activities just won't drop the, at with those mod slots anymore that's actually why I stopped grinding for guns in Destiny 2 because yeah. It hurts when that stuff gets nerfed hard, and you spent like weeks getting it. Boy, mm. we don't have we don't have time to share my grievances with the sniper <laughs> rifle to, with the uh, sniper rifle changes that they've made. I'm not fan. I liked my I liked the Izanagi DPS meta, and they have changed it. 
not a fan. That gun was such a... It was finally good. And then they're like, oh, wait, this is too good. Let's make it boring. Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. Like, oh. <laughs> I mean, yes, I know it's a gun designed for high burst damage and not sustained DPS, but th just let me have this. Come on. <laughs> well, what sucks is when they um, change it just so it operates better in multiplayer, it just sucks in PvE from then on. They like they overtune the balancing of it just so that it performs a certain way in like competitive multiplayer, I guess you could say. Yeah, and I I think like um, I mean that's a whole I I haven't played a lot of trials, but that's a whole separate thing because it's basically if you're not like a crucible god, there's basically zero incentive to go into trials right now because you'll just get raffle stomped, <laughs> and you will not make you will not even because you have to win three games to get a drop, to get like yeah, trials no. gear. None of that's yeah, happening so for me. Three games and against like the increasingly small tri trials player pool, that is increasingly more difficult. Um, so just go ahead and say this is a so, mode I shouldn't play. Just <laughs> it's. I mean, yeah. Like I don't play it. Um, I also think there's a little bit of. Um, I think another problem that they're running into is the game kind of feels really shallow right now because like with these new seasons they like oh like in uh when shadow keep first came out here's like oh here's the vex offensive activity which is like a six player match made thing it was kind of like a mini public event strike that everyone mm -hmm. kind of worked together mm -hmm. on then last then that went away and then a whole new six player match made mini strike raid thing called the sundial came out and that has you know different armor different weapons and stuff but then that went away and then now we have this like seraph tower thing which is like is really i i, I despise this i do not <laughs> I, like i like most stuff in destiny but i fucking hate the seraph tower i think they're not fun i think they're stupid they were like really unnecessarily hard at first, which is, it just felt like there was like a here. lot of there's like a lot of inflated grind with that more so than in any other stuff. That I was just like, I mean, and I, I like I even still got the seasonal title for this season because I'm a sicko um, <laughs> and got really lucky uh, compared to a lot of other players. But I think the problem is because this game, this mode is like these modes are like in the game for like two three months and then they're gone mm -hmm. while modes like gambit crucible strikes haven't really received or like the menagerie that everybody now has access to because they just bumped included all that stuff in the free to play destiny which is pretty cool um they haven't really updated any of it yeah and so it kind of feels like they're spending so much like investing so much resources into like these like activities that are really temporary mm -hmm. and that's kind of causing like the core modes of the game to not get armor refreshes like new like quests and like weapons yeah I'd, quests, I mean, I'd, like, I'd, I'd rather have new strikes and like mini raids and you know fun events in gambit mm -hmm. than i would some like just random yeah mission thing that's, and like and, and that's or like the menagerie like one really thick one kind of really just like layup update that they should do is like a menagerie loot pool like refresh so again I'm, I'm trying to wrap up here but like the menagerie had like a set loot pool and basically you can like plug in your like rewards to like say oh I want I'm going to get this exact shotgun with this exact master work on it and with this like and so it was really cool because you can, like, it was, it's a really cool, like, kind of casual mini raid thing in, like, a really cool setting. Um, and you can get the exact loot you want. So it, it's, like, really great for, like, getting cool stuff that you want. And then you take that and then use that in the other modes, which is fun. Because, like, I farmed a very, uh, basically a shotgun that has insane range and can snipe people and with it in Crucible. And it feels great. Um... <laughs> And everyone's happy, but but like that, they haven't seen like a update to like what you can, what can be farmed from that mode, uh, and who knows if we'll ever see any changes to that. So, 
So let me ask you this, Mike. Mm-hmm. Are we kind of hitting the limit of, you know, what this game can do without a monthly subscription? Like, do you think that because, mm-hmm. you know, there are no more... Because I don't think there are any more expansions or big content launches that are happening for I Destiny. Think, I mean, I don't know um, about that timeline. I do know that I, I'm going to guess that based on like some story hints that are pretty clearly coming um uh i'm gonna say we're probably due for one more kind of fall like major expansion this fall and then the definitely the earliest we would i think the earliest possible date we would have for like a destiny 3 would be 20 like fall of next year uh um, someone that's brought this my up to guess me. Um, <coughs> um, but I mean, I think like, I think there's definitely still, I think some support and I think there's definitely like, obviously the community is there. Um, I think it's just, it's kind of just like a resources question. Cause, um, it just feels cause like, it feels like they're kind of just letting these like the like, core, like strikes, crucible, gambit. Um, that kind of core gameplay stuff, just, they need, they just, it feels like they're, let, like, investing so much on, like, these other activities that are temporary, and I mean, I know they want to make it feel like an evolving world and stuff, but it, it feels like it's just kind of robbing, like, the, it's not really, like, they're not doing a lot to add new flavor to the kind of main tenets of the game, and... So I and I think that Bungie is like aware of a lot of these kind of criticisms, and is gonna try to, you know, dial and like give. They've talked about some very much needed TLC coming to those modes soon. Um, but it's it's just kind of rough when it, I think people just kind of got used to like last year's pass, which had two raids. Um, some really great modes and really great like missions and stuff to get, but also didn't have like everyone on the like subreddit memes about this. So I don't want to just like spout what Reddit says, but why not? Um, <laughs> Go for it. But it feels like a lot of this stuff is kind of engineered with like a FOMO type design, and I don't think it's as bad as some people make it out to be. But um, it just is kind of. I think they just are... Destiny's a bad game again. I wouldn't say that. Um, but I think... It, I think I think part of it is some people just need to... Some people... it's Some people on, de- on the Reddit are like, man, this is such a grind when I have to, like, fully level this up on... Like, do this on, like, all three of my characters, and I hate this so much, and, I'm like... I don't just, get people that constantly keep a stable of three Destiny just, characters. That's insane, man. Like... I'm in the top 10% of, like, playtime on Destiny 2, and I only play one character. And Can you imagine, like, tripling that? Yeah, that's the thing, is it just, like, if it's not fun, just, like, don't do it. Stop I mean, playing. there's a lot of things Bungie should be should be fixing here, but it's okay to just play Animal Crossing and other stuff, and that's what I've been doing, so. Uh, speaking of right. Bungie, if you Rant don't over. mind... No, no, I, I want to add on to that um, because I want your speculation on this because I was speculating mm-hmm. this with someone else on this. Yeah, words. Uh, I noticed on Bungie's career website, they have 18 engineer positions open. That's a lot. I think they are... Um, I mean, I think it's pretty clear also right now that um, they're all they're either... Like, a all hands on deck for this the fall expansion, but mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they're also working on a new IP. You think so? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that was announced here. Actually, let me. Cause uh, I was talking with my friend about this. Like, you don't keep engineers that many engineer staff around for like a game that's already out. You source them out for like a new project and a heavy new project, cause. That's a lot of talent you're throwing at something, whatever that something is. 
Wait, wasn't Bungie? Yeah, a... this was. What? What is it? It looks like. Yeah, here's a post from. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to find the best, like, a good news source here for this. Oh. Hold on. Da, da, da. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they are, uh, uh, have been working on a new IP with, like, the, with, like, NetEase as a, a main investor. So that might be part of it too, is that they, cause it's, you know, they haven't announced any details about what it's actually like, but mm -hmm. um, that is something that is in the works too. Uh, do you got a link for that? I kind of want to look at that. Uh, I mean, if you just Google Bungie new IP, you'll see news about it. All right. But yeah, that's something that is, it's known. So that is, uh, it's still pretty early on. Cause I think that first got announced in like 2018. All right. Well, so then there that is. That's probably it. That that's probably one hundred percent it. Yeah. All right. So Josh had to step away. So I want to talk about yeah. this other game that I've been playing. Um, it's been out for a while, so it's not big news. But I decided to actually pick it up. Uh, Star mm -hmm. Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It's okay. Oh. No, it's fine. It's fine. I think I messed myself up by playing what I consider now mm -hmm. the game of the year and then trying to play this, and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. It's good. You get force powers. It plays a lot like Metroid. It, uh... Actually, it... It plays a lot like Dark Souls combined with Metroid. Mm-hmm. Because you get certain I mean, Dark Souls power. itself is very Metroid, Castlevania-like, in a sense. This one has a map that looks a lot like Metroid, like a Metroid mm -hmm. Prime... And specifically, the force powers that you get give you access to more areas you simply weren't able to get to, but that one force power lets you access it. So it's like, it, it's a lot like Metroid. It's a lot like Dark Souls because it has meditation places that might as well be bonfires. That's where you upgrade your skills, and it resets all the monsters and enemies in the area, which is weird! Because by monsters and enemies in mm -hmm. the area, it also resets all the stormtroopers that you just killed and you you go to the meditation place. They're back. All the stormtroopers are back. Even the ones you cut in half. You're like, oh. They... That's it's like, oh. Uh, uh. Is this a Super Nintendo game? <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, Jedi Dark Souls. <laughs> that, was a, that was a joke. <laughs> um, I do hate one thing on it. And this made me stop playing it for a while. The timing to do parries, because you don't have a shield, a la, you know, Bloodborne. Uh, but the timings to do parries in this game... I hate the timing to do parries in this game. I, I despise it. I don't know what the timing is. It, I, I can't get it down. Josh, Sounds if like you fucking say it, good. Josh, I will, <laughs> I will mute everything you say in the podcast. <laughs> Sounds like somebody needs to get good. I'm go I'm really going to take a consideration whether I'm going to mute that out or not. <laughs> <laughs> Just one big on bleep over my vo vocals there. It, it might mm. be. Who knows? Or it might be a cat or something. What do you like feel about that. the window? Do you Is it just like not like synced up to the... Feel, does it not feel good with like the animations or... So, so a bit it? of background. I'm not bad at Dark Souls style's game. I can yeah, parry like, just fine. Obviously. I beat Lord Gwyn by parrying. Shut up, Josh. <laughs> I saw how yeah, far you that's got. That's what Dark Souls. does, right? You have. That's how you have to beat Lord Gwyn. Exactly. Like, like if you don't know how to. Game. Shut up, Josh. <laughs> but it. basically, Lord Gwyn. But to be fair, Lord Gwyn is basically can you parry? And you yeah, cannot that, beat Lord Gwyn if you cannot parry. So. You can if you have a co-op buddy and he's willing to tank for you. <laughs> <laughs> giants, giants, giants. giants. <laughs> if you decide to unstoppable. Pimp step the Lord Gwyn as giant dad. Who knows what you're... Oh, no, you have what to beat the game first to be real right. giant dad. <laughs> what rings you got, bro? <laughs> what rings you got? <laughs> that means new game plus, bitches. Yeah, Lord, Lord Gwyn Black is 100%. Flip. Did you learn to parry yet? If no, well, this section just became near impossible for you, little player. Mm -hmm. Actually, by the time you do learn to parry in Dark Souls, the game becomes like a joke. 
And that's why so many people do reruns of... No, no, I take it oh, back. Yeah. I take it back. Lord Arnstein and Smaug are still bullshit. I can't believe we got to do a Dark Souls ramp. Dude, but here we no, are. that's one of the best boss fights in Dark Souls. It's got the best music. Y um, yeah, which is... It, but it's still not that hard. It's... Oh my gosh, without a co-op buddy, it sucks. Damage. Oh. Oh, it fucking it's sucks. It's definitely one of the most hype boss fights I've ever done, though. And also, the cap demon's not fair on the game design level. That is not a fair <laughs> fight! <laughs> I should play Dark Souls again. That's uh, if you play Dark Souls, let me know. I'll go ahead and co-op with you. But seriously, the cap demon in this bullshit. <laughs> You're walking through the fog door. What's this? He's running at you full tilt. <laughs> His axes are already about to hit you in the dome. And if you somehow dodge that, two dogs that when they bite you inflict instant poison damage oh, are already wait. on you. wait. Okay. I was thinking of the bridge demon. Or like no, the, um, no. The bridge demon the, is oh, stupid. Oh, the one in that, the one you fight in that little closet? It was like, yes. hey, I'm gonna fuck you up here in this alley, dude. Yeah, yes. hey, <laughs> That is bullshit. You are right. The Capra Demon is 100% bullshit, and well, yes, see, I... Then you just gotta, like, <laughs> like, get to the stairs and, like, fall on him, and then do it again. No, that's how I won. I cheesed the fuck out of him, because everyone else online, oh, God, even geez. even the Fextra Life official wiki for Dark Souls, well, unofficial wiki for Dark Souls, they're like, yeah, just go over here, get to this edge right here, <laughs> and just jump stab him. Nothing else you're gonna do is gonna work. <laughs> Uh, what, unless is the, what is? I'm sorry. Now we're on. Now we're getting sidetracked. But I like this comment. What's the cheesiest boss of Dark Souls? Uh, or all of them. I'm trying to think of. No, oh, the tree. Whatever that one is called. Bed of chaos. Uh so bed of chaos. Bed of chaos is proof bed that of they chaos shouldn't. Is terrible. Bed of chaos is proof they shouldn't have switched directors mid-game development because that no. that uh, the entire like lost Isolith section, that entire section is bullshit. That is just it, it's it's hilarious because like oh just like doop 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 you can just see that someone like copy pasted like the bosses from the earlier game. It's like oh uh, these are regular guys now. Uh, okay, well, sure. What if there were ten Taurus demons just blocking your path? And then you're, Great. Who thought? Who who playtested this? <laughs> Did you like the Capra demon? What if there were just four of them on this bridge? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Man, I need to um, I need to uh, find it in the Dark Souls subreddit. But there, so I think one of the best posts that was ever there was the Sen was, "Hey, this is an AMA. My name is Sen. Ask me anything." Sen, <laughs> which is not really how that translation works from. Uh, the Japanese, but he's just people are just like, why does your house have so many traps? <laughs> and he, he just replied, why are you in my house? That's a perfect Very answer. Funny. And yes, yeah, Sen's Fortress, the first time you go through, is just a box of bullshit. It's so fucking oh, snake bed, snake bed. It's not as bad as what you were noting, a uh, bed of chaos where. Um, with the tree boss and every, and it just randomly says, "Hey, the floor underneath you disappeared." Insta death. Yeah, the, Battle the, Chaos is like the worst. And then it just like, "Hey, full level swipe." In, insta death. Why? <sighs> okay. I actually like Dark Souls. I'm gonna stop ranting about Dark Souls for just a minute. Father Gas going this bullshit. All right, I had to get that. Out of my it's a skill side. check. It's a skill check. <laughs> it's good. It's con confirmation of mastery of the core mechanics of the game. Do you know how to dodge and the do you know check. how to parry? No? This boss got a whole lot harder. <laughs> Father G coming to... You just he... gotta get the music box. Then it rages him and they just get in and get out. I learned the hard way. Anyway. The music box only get works in? three times and then it never works again. <laughs> So remember when we said we only have good takes on this game? I think that all, this podcast, I think it also talks about, goes into effect about talking about good games. So like, let's stop talking about bad games. Oh, move on. Josh. Oh, Josh. That's bait. That's that, that's that, that's that's <laughs> okay. I, uh, as I was getting to before, Jedi Fallen Order. If you guys have not played it and you see it on sale on Steam, totally advise picking it up. The game looks great. It plays pretty well. Josh is a Metroid fan, you would love it. And don't worry, if even if you're not a Dark Souls fan, it's really not that bad. Just 
If you're worried about timing, just do what I did. Just drop it to Jedi Knight mode, because it actually does have difficulty sliders. And it even has the easiest of all the easy sliders. It has story mode slider, where the enemies basically just fall at your whim. You're swinging the lightsaber once, and you're just decapitating them. And there's, whole, there's no challenge. You're, in there. you're there for the story. That sounds like exactly what somebody with two kids needs. <laughs> <laughs> I I welcome that. If they found out, like, yeah, we'll just put in the story mode for people that just want to experience it and enjoy the mechanics of the game and go exploring. I was like, yeah, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. If you want to, if you want the real challenge and you want the parry timing really tight, there's Jedi um, yep. Master. And yeah, I'm not going to play that. It has optional super bosses. I fought one. Um, you find one at the very beginning of the game, and um, that actually is what made me stop playing the game because I'm going to talk to Mike here for a moment. When you're playing Bloodborne and you go to the left and you see that, God damn it, you see the optional axe orc or whatever it is. You know the one I'm talking about, the one with the big ass axe, and you just got all of your gear and such. And you're like, yeah, I could probably take him. And you learn the hard way. You can't take him. Slam. And oh <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy. Like, yeah, they, that they, guy. They have one of those in Jedi Fallen Order where you're like, oh, that's just a big frog. I could take him. You can't take him. You 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 can't. Uh, it, it is a mastery skill check, just like that one guy in Bloodborne. And I like that when when Soulsborne's games do that stuff, because they're optional, you don't have to deal with it, you get some cool awards if you do want to put up with it. Anyways, it's a really cool of, game. What's the cheesiest boss in Bloodborne? It might be the Amygdala, because, like, it's too big. Wait, you just, can't act... Not... I... Can you fight that thing? Yeah, there's like a secret. There's like one of the. Um, oh, it's not the Nightmare of Mensis. It's the other place. I can't remember what it's called. I haven't played it in forever, but yeah, you fight one of those. I was actually and going to. You save just kind of like bonk at its little legs, and it's like really weird. Uh, to answer that question earnestly, I was going to say originally Father G, just because it took me five hours to beat him, embarrassingly enough. But I will it cop up to that and admit it. Um, but no, the actual answer is Bloodstained Respect. Beast. Oh my god. Oh, Bloodstar Be Blood mm. Beast, that's right. That is god, the cheesiest I boss. That. I hate that boss fight so much. You're like, okay, I'm doing pretty good, and then the poison starts. And you're like, yeah, then oh, it just god. starts, what if no, I just start shooting god, poison no. off of my body? How much poison armor do you have? <laughs> it better be a lot! <laughs> I mean, that boss is basically designed to teach you two about the fact that, oh, if you press circle, you will never die. If you do it at the exact right time. Wait, what circle? Or like the dodge button. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah t uh, iframes and whatnot. Yeah, because the dodge windows for um, Bloodborne are like pretty huge. They're generous, yeah. They're pretty Yeah, I, I, I would say Bloodstarved Beast. The game the game was a house of cards after the Bloodstarved Beast for me. And I just blazed through it and I loved it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. God, I should re we should replay that. That's a good game. Moving on. Yeah, last thing I wanted to discuss with you guys is uh, Epic Games just released uh, their trailer for Unreal 5, and it looks good. Yeah, that's, ca that's kind of looks... what I thought, too. Um, I'm impressed. They, uh, they showed off something that a lot of people on my development team at the studio I work at were saying, like, yeah, that's, that's cool, but that's bullshit, is... Um, Unreal 5 will allow you in engine to have, and I quote, infinite triangles, which is how many polyg polygonal triangles you can have per character model or per sets. And it's like, yes, there are lots of software, pieces of software that allow you to do that, but the thing is, eventually you have to put this game on a disc. <laughs> yeah, some, something, something a, pe a piece of silicon somewhere down the line has to render that. <laughs> and not everybody has a 10 gigawatt <laughs> server farm at their disposal. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's really cool marketing, and I'm sure that's like really cool forward thinking. And I brought this up to you guys, and I want like people listening to the podcast to think about this. That thing I was complaining about for Final Fantasy VII Remake, where you have to put in a disc just to download the assets, then you can put in a disc to play the game. Is that our future? <laughs> With people that use Unreal 5 Engine, where it's like, 
This is the best we got. We we've hit the limit mm -hmm. of disc capacity. So there's the data disc yeah, I mean, and there's the game disc. I doubt I doubt that I doubt that Blu-ray is really super incentivized to work on an extra high capacity disc because I mean probably the bulk of Blu-rays are used still in in movie applications and they don't really need much higher capacity even at 4 and potentially 8K so like um, I'll I mean, challenge that. Feels... I'll challenge that. I think more people watch their movies via streaming than they do uh, purchasing the physical copy. I would, I would still almost bet that the majority of Blu-rays discs that are printed are sold as movies than they are as games. That's an interesting query. I never thought of that. So, yeah, yeah that probably makes sense. But maybe I mean maybe because Sony Sony does own yeah. Blu-ray, so maybe they do. Maybe they will be incentivized to find a way to you know do a do a double capacity or, or increase the. You know, oh, here we go. Just like it used to be, two-sided discs, double Blu-ray. You have to turn it in and then flip it. Oh my gosh, I don't want this. I don't want that future. Give give me the data disc download. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go back to inserting more discs into my system. The that that time has passed. We're not in the PS1 days anymore. Please no. Yeah. Well. Um. Yeah, that's probably our future though, because things keep going like that, and it's just going to be an ever-ending arms race to put more and more triangles on your bands and making them prettier, and making those water assets look. Much, no. much more realistic. Always and... have to have water assets. Always yeah. got to show off the ray tracing of the like, water. Ray, I don't know from like a technical perspective, but from the vibe that you get from it, does it seem like this will be? Um, I mean, I know you've said that you've Unreal is pretty easy to work with. Does it seem like it? Because people in uh, in the, the kind of scuttlebutt seems like people are pretty jazzed about some of the stuff that is built into the system to kind of shortcut a couple of processes uh so unreal also bought cubic motion which is mm -hmm. also the same studio that unreal was using for their uh motion capture and facial capture and they bought that and implemented it into unreal 5 and that just cuts off a whole piece of software and dev time that you have to use as an example so that's rad as hell <laughs> is what i'm trying to get <laughs> that that ba that could almost cut out a whole department's worth of like work. Wow, I mean anything to increase the the facial capture um, capabilities of games. I mean, I'll you know, real quick, I kind of mentioned it a little bit, but like I've been playing mostly. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and the game is very pretty, mm -hmm. but the facial animations are. They can be rough sometimes. <laughs> so to to hear that that might be baked into the system is is pretty ex is pretty exciting. And I, I would imagine too, just with higher fidelity and and more processing power behind, you know, you're gonna be able to just devote more power to making those facial animations and movements more realistic and more lifelike and further away from that. Um, you know that that uncanny valley that that some of those games can get into with the way they're the herky jerky moments or the not quite full mm -hmm. animation of a mouth during speech. Uh, something else that's really really cool <clears throat> is Unreal has like if you ever wanted to, someone wanted to start getting into game development, Unreal offers the biggest incentives to like start using their system versus anybody else's. For one. This beautiful, gorgeous-looking platform is free to use, and they won't charge you any royalties on any games you sell up to $1 million in retail sales of the game. Then you have to make sure you negotiate with them what the sales retail will be for the licensure after that point. But before then, you're just like, if you're a small business, or you're That's a small-time really cool. dev, and you just want to mess with it, they let you, and they're like, yeah, go for it. It's all yours. But once you start making it big, you know, you, you come talk to us. Then we can you can you imagine like telling some of those like B tier game developers from like the PS 
one and PS2 oh, era. Like, God. wow. Can you imagine telling one of those devs like, "Yo, in like ten years, one of the most robust game development engine and set of tools is gonna be free to use up to a million dollars in sales." Like, <laughs> and they're just like. I'm about to ruin this man's whole career. Give me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, then we wouldn't get, like... I mean... Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. They would just be like, I'm going to go lie down now. Yeah. Yeah. I've spent the, the, pu- the past seven weeks of my life building the engine for... Uh, um... A straight to a movie, Gungrave. a movie tie-in game. Uh, Gungrave. King. Um, and uh, I need to go lie down. <laughs> a movie tie-in game. Oh no! <laughs> oh man, Thor! I built the engine for Thor. <laughs> the video game. <laughs> I had to build the engine for the SpongeBob movie video game, the game. You know what? Real talk, the SpongeBob games are actually highly rated. They're shockingly good. <laughs> and That's the because I developed the engine. Okay. It was kind of like a uh, DuckTales type thing, but not as good. But yeah, people have good. praised Battle for Bikini Bottom. <laughs> Didn't they do a remaster of that? They did! <laughs> That's incredible. That's so funny. Wow. Um, I, I might, We might... We might have to do an unscripted gaming plate. A battle for Bikini Bottom. I also remember the King Kong game being very good. It, it's a. I it's remember. Like, I it's remember like Half Life, but with dinosaurs and insects. Yeah, it's like. I'm into that. It, I remember that being like weirdly good for a tie-in game. Some movie tie-in games and aren't had the some like worst. had some like kind of interesting mechanics with like the ammo economy and stuff like that. That was like I don't know, way more way more thought went into it than it should have. And good for them. <laughs> if we're okay, I got I got a good one. I built the engine for Enter the Matrix, the GameCube version. I think that game is rad as hell, but I also understand why people do not like that. <laughs> I respect that you. If you like, like it, the, you like well, it. Okay, it's like the action is like you know not fun, but then you can like <laughs> you put in the okay, you're you're talking to eleven year old Mike here, and you're okay. like, dude, you remember that Matrix movie that you barely understand, but you think is the coolest thing possible, such that you made a home movie version of it at your friend Bixel's house. Uh, yo, oh what if goodness. there's a video game of it, and you put in the cheat codes by typing in the Matrix code? You do. You type it in the DOS. Fucking incredible. Extremely good shit. <laughs> the other I'm just, Neo game that came after that was also pretty good. I, I heard Enter the Neo really was cool. alright. I never that played that one. I think it was pretty good. I did buy okay. Enter the Matrix the day it came out, the day before I saw Matrix Reloaded in theaters when that yeah, was a thing. Yeah, because like, there's some plot that like is... There's some good plot there. Yeah, the the Is game ties in. I will not say it was a good video game though. That no. went right back to EB Games like after I beat it. it it's a very <laughs> it's a bad but very interesting game. I think we should be allowed I think you know, we should play. I think it's good to experience things that are not good, mediocre. Because sometimes they're not good for very interesting reasons. And just because something is not be- is not good doesn't mean you shouldn't try it or read it or watch it because no no it's I, I, in some ways. I am for B tier and C tier games they have their place on my shelf. Uh, some Damn. some games I have treasured memories with were B tier and C tier. Dude, and, like uh, the Lord of the Rings, the Lord of the Rings movie games are pretty dope. Okay, those are those are good games. Those uh, are good games. Hold your tongue. Oh, pretty much all of those are actually really good. Like, especially when... Oh, God. I remember when the, the Return of the King one came out and, like, the parry, like, auto combo thing mm-hmm. used to be, like, B-A-R in uh the, in Two Towers, but in the Return of the King, it was just B-R. Cut out that middle step. I'm like, oh, he-. Like, 13-year-old Mike is like, oh, hell yeah. These orcs about to get fucked up! <laughs> to turn this shit around... I don't know how we got from a conversation about the biggest gaming engine in the world to 
Lord of the Rings. Speaking of turning shit around, uh-oh. Intel really needs to turn their shit around. Oh, I'll allow that. Josh, I was more tech minute. I, I was reading yeah, some stuff on quick. Intel. I can't wait to hear Crick. Josh's take. Yeah. So, okay, we have the terribly, terribly named Intel 10th Gen um, series of processors coming out here very soon. I actually think some pre-orders um, started to go live today or yesterday. Um, but the 10th Gen Comet Lake desktops, um, which is a variant of the Skylake X, built on their 10, their 14 plus plus nanometer process because Intel can't get off of 14 nanometers. Meanwhile, AMD is already on seven and talking about five, but you know, whatever. Um, That's insanity to me, by the way. Just like to scale perspective, that is insanity to me. Yeah, well, this this range of processors in the 10th gen, there are 32 of them, ranging from their Celeron processor at $442 all the way up to their Core i9 at $488. The i9-10900KF. Just think about that name for a minute. The i9-10900KF. F. What's the F stand for? Fuck if I know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, I think the so there's the 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 10900K and then the 10900KF. I think that's more about. Um, I think it's a binning and um, internal graphics if they have internal graphics on it. Um, but so their their top of the line is a 10 count 10 core 20 thread processor with a base frequency of 3.7, but it boosts to 5.3. So. With that boost clock, you are still claiming the, you know, quote unquote gaming king. But at four hundred eighty-eight dollars for that high tier chip, um, it's a lot, especially because Ryzen. You know, there there are some rumors that the four series chips are going to start getting close to breaking those um, frequencies. But the other the other processing news, which really puts Intel on blast, is the Two new Ryzen chips that just launched in the 3 series um, came out. Ryzen 3, the 3100 and the 3300X. A 100 and a $120 processor, respectively, for those two. The 3100, you don't really need to talk about because it's a 4-core, four 8-thread four processor. But the 3300X is a 4-core, 3, 8-thread processor at 3.8 gigahertz that boosts to 4.4 which is basically what my top of the line processor 6700K was just a few years ago that cost $400. Now in a $120 chip that also is on their new motherboard that is PCIe Gen 4 capable, it the fact that you can get basically the highest the the most processors that you need for gaming for $120 um it's it's just kind of unreal. It's um... so I saw this thing, Josh, that I think you'll appreciate yeah. <clears throat> when it comes to Intel's new processor. Uh, the ugh, this name, i nine ten nine hundred K, the world's fastest gaming processor, mind you. Yep. Uh, it, that is true. It uses two hundred and thirty five watts of power at four point eight gigahertz. And it runs at 90 Celsius. <laughs> yeah. At all times. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 power hungry chips. Um, which you know, yeah, they're they're milking every last bit of performance out of this 14 nanometer Skylake processor, but at a very high cost. I mean, I want to say the, um, I forget. I want to say the 3300X is like. 45 watts, 65 watts of, you know, just just getting at the limit of the stock cooler, which it comes mm -hmm. with a cooler. At $120, it comes with a cooler. Oh, that's pretty this cool. Four, what type of cooler does it come with? So the it comes with the AMD Wraith Stealth cooler, which is a pretty decent box cooler. Um, it'll be right at the limit of what that can do at about 65 watts. Um, but the, AM, the Intel chip that $488 chip, which is just a suggested price, that is the wholesale price. It'll probably be more at retail. You still have to buy a cooler. And at that TDP, 
you're going to have to plunk down some money for a custom loop, a really good AIO cooler, or a really good air cooler. Um, it's just, you know, I get it. Some of the people want to always have the bleeding edge. and This is too much. You know, you might want to go for that 5.3 gigahertz, but, like, it just, it's, Intel is not really putting themselves out there besides just raw thread, raw clock speed because in in core count in what you need if you're just doing gaming and you're not doing any other sort of workload applications like amd just constantly and repeatedly over these last few years has been proving that they are the champ i mean like sure they may not have the the clock speed yet but in every other capacity like you can do more work with their processors you can have more money in your pocket with these processors you can just have more flexibility like it's there you know they they still only have 10 cores when you're getting into 16 cores in some of the Ryzen chips like it's just it's not it's not looking great for Intel uh but to hey. be fair for once Josh just put his money with his mouth there and I think you said you got a new Intel card so yeah I I um I did recently upgrade I had a a, a 1060 and I upgraded to a 5700 XT from AMD. Um, so ru running, I think the fifth most powerful graphics card on the market right now. No, give or take the the fourth or the fifth most powerful graphics card in the consumer market. Also a lot cheaper than a lot of Nvidia's options as well. Um, I'm still rocking the 6700K, which is right now you know on par with the $120. Um, 3300X from Ryzen, but uh, I, you know, maybe in the next year or two, maybe the Ryzen 4 or 5 series, I'll, I'll make the full sw switch to Team Red and and do an upgrade. But I have a question um, for you, and it's <clears throat> about your video card slightly. Go ahead. Did you beat Doom Eternal? No. All right. I know. We'll come back to that. I've I've been I've been I've been waiting for a two hour block because as as I left off last time, I'm at the very end. I want to make sure that I experience that end from start to finish, uninterrupted. So, if pandemic time with two children, hard to find a two-hour block. If you're Been really, really of... good at Doom Eternal, it'll probably take you one hour, but it took me like two and a half hours, so I would highly suggest... Then again, I died a lot. I died a lot to that final boss. Not even gonna lie, yeah. I died like four times to it. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's... Uh... That's the that's the that's the hardware tech minute. Um, a AMD put Intel on notice again, so we'll we'll see what happens. All right. I don't see I don't see a lot of people buying these ten series. But the tech wars continue. Yeah, but you know where you can keep current on all the latest happenings in the tech wars. Ah, uh, here we go. Unscriptedgaming.com. <laughs> that's right unscriptedgaming.com there you will find links to all of our social media at facebook and twitter twitter.com slash unscripted underscore gaming um you can also get us on google play podcast apple podcast stitcher soundcloud all over the internet spotify coming soon just get us in your ears youtube get us on your eyes everywhere keep up with everything Unfortunately, sometimes Dark Souls. But everything else that matters Unfortunately. here at Unscripting Gaming. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. My name is Josh. My name is Ray. My name is Mike. I'm Peace. salty. Peace. <laughs>